Here's how I modeled the iconic Nissan GTR R34 from Paul Walker. I started the scene off by typing in the measurements of the car into the size of the cube. Then I inserted in the side view of the blueprint and scaled it up until it was matching with the size of the cube. Then I duplicated the side view and rotated it into the front, the top and the back view so that I have set up the blueprint correctly. I renamed all of the created blueprints to organize the workspace and went ahead and deleted cube so that I could have a massive time loss by adding in a new cube and merging it at the center to be left with one single vertex. I moved the single vertex to the beginning of the hood and extruded it all the way to the right side where the hood ends and added in some loop cuts to match up with the blueprint line. Then I extruded the outer vertices to the end of the hood and again added in some loop cuts to match up with the blueprint line. And this is the most crucial part in modeling a car. Then while extruding the vertices to the middle of the hood I noticed that I haven't added a mirror modifier yet so I went straight ahead and added in a mirror modifier and enabled clipping so that the middle vertices cannot stick through the middle line of the blender scene. And almost all of the hood is completely flat except this little step right here so I went straight ahead and traced the blueprint with some vertices. Then I started to fill in some faces so we can see how the hood looks and the model already started to look really good. After the hood I started to model the front side fender and right here you can see that I struggled to match the depth of the door because you don't have a blueprint line which you can follow but I managed this part by just placing the vertices where I think they should be judging from the front view. Then I started to model the real arch but only for the part for the front fender and that's because we will have a way easier time later on when we start adding the car panel gaps but we will come to this part later on. Then after struggling to fill in the faces for this area right here we already finished the front side fender and now we can go ahead and start modeling the front bumper from this car and this was one of the hardest bumpers that I have ever modeled in my life and trust me if I say that I have modeled a lot of bumpers in my life already. In the last episode we have modeled the Lada, I said that I have never modeled a car with so much chrome parts so I'm already curious what the next car will be about. And if you have any suggestions on what car I should model next then go ahead and leave a comment with the name of the car and it is going to be modeled in one of the next episodes. And although this part right here took a little bit more time than normal it still was completely doable by just using the basic 3D modeling techniques. And at the end the bumper was looking really really good. Modeling the side of the car is one of the easiest parts because you actually only extrude the vertices back. The only special part of this car right here was the side fender but it was nothing crazy. But before completely finishing the side of the car, I need the vertices from the back real arch so I went straight ahead into adding the back of the car. And once I start modeling the back of the car, I also need to start modeling the top of the car. So of course I went straight ahead and started modeling the top. To model the roof you do not need any special techniques because it is just a flat area. Now with the back real arch finished, I could go ahead and finish off the side fender. The trunk of the car was quite hard to model because the blueprint was not very visible because of the spoiler and the reference images showed only the car from the bottom and not from the top. I first closed closed up the area for the taillights with faces and then added in a new cylinder and scaled it up to the size of the taillight and duplicated it because we have two taillights. Then I added in a boolean modifier so I could cut out the place for the taillights. And then again I went straight ahead with using basic 3D modeling techniques to finish up the back bumper of this car. And although I can see a really big exhaust in the reference image, I first modeled the bumper without any exhaust because the exhaust is only on one side and I first wanted to be sure that the car body is finished so I can go ahead and enable the mirror modifier and then cut out the hole for the exhaust later on. So after finishing the area for the license plate, the complete car body was finished. The first thing that I start to do after I finished the car Body is to start filling in all of the black parts. I start at the front and work my way to the back filling all of the gaps that are still left in the car body. For this I just duplicate all of the outer vertices, separate them into a new selection and then press F to fill in all of the faces. And while doing so I also cut out this indicator section right here and then I finish up the front with this side air vent right here. Then I went straight ahead into creating the side indicator and for this I have added in a new circle with 6 vertices and scaled it down. With the knife tool I have cut out the hole for the door handle. And I have also cut off the door handle itself and extruded it out to make it look like this. Then I wanted to fill in all of the windows and for this I first created a black frame. Then I added in the side support between the windows and as the last part in this area I have added in the window itself. After adding in the side windows I always go ahead and add in the windshield and I do this by extruding all of the upper vertices, scaling it on the x axis and then moving it down on the z axis. And then I will straight ahead into cutting out the black window frame to make the car look more realistic. The back window is the easiest one to create, you just duplicate all of the outer vertices and connect them, add in a loop pad in the middle and moving it a little bit out. 
Then I model the side mirrors and I don't know about you, but I'm not a fan of modeling the side mirrors because every side mirror is a complete different mirror itself but every blueprint looks just the same. But this one came out looking quite okay. To create the headlights I first duplicated all of the outer vertices and extruded them in. Then I added in a new circle and tried to hit the exact shape and it was quite challenging to place all of the three circles correctly. A really fun part in car modeling is to create a spoiler. And I think the reason for that is that very few cars have a spoiler and so I do not model spoilers that often and probably also because it's a very unique part in a car. Creating the rear taillights was way easier than the headlights. So there's not much that I can tell you about this one. Then I added in a really big cylinder full of exhaust and placed it to where it should be. Then I started to add in all of the car panel gaps and although you can't see them that much, I think they make a really big difference. So and after I have added in all of the car panel gaps, I could cut out the hole for the exhaust because for this I had to enable the mirror modifier on the car body and then I went straight ahead into adding the exhaust itself. Then for the rim I have added in a new circle and divided it by 5 so that I only had to model one fifth of the rim. The rim itself was very easy easy to make, so I could rotate this one part 5 times to get the complete rim. Then I also added in some depth to the rim and I finished up the wheel by adding in a tire. Then with this one wheel I added in all of the other 3 wheels to have 4 wheels at one car. And the last thing that I've done was to create the underbody. I just fixed the wrong normals by recalculating the normals and then read straight into rendering out the car. And the rendering came out looking really really good. If you by now also want to learn how to create 3D models like this you can go ahead and click the first link in my description. There you will find my full step-by-step -step course on how to model a low-poly car in Blender. The course covers the whole process from setting up the car blueprints, creating the car body, the additional exterior parts, the windows, the wheels, the inside of the headlights and taillights, and every other detail that is needed to make the car look like this. Now go ahead and tell me in the comments what you think about this car and how it came out and also let me know in the comments if you have any car suggestions that I should model next. In my description you can also find a link to my low poly discord server so if you're starting out as a 3D artist this is the perfect place for you to start. And now my kings and queens thank you very much for watching this video. I wish you all of the best and we'll see us in the next video.